This is the man seen as the opposition's hope to take on Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is travelling across the country asking voters what they want. This is a question you will have to ask yourselves every day. Unemployment, inflation, this is your future. Well, going by the support over here, it seems like a vote of confidence, at least from the supporters of Rahul Gandhi for the Congress party. This is a very significant, politically significant constituency of Amethi, which had always belonged to the Gandhi family. For 15 years, Rahul Gandhi represented this seat. Before that, his mother, his father, his uncle. So it's really remained with the Gandhi family. Until 2019, in a shock defeat, the Congress party lost to the BJP over here. So can he win them back? An hour away from the noise of the campaign trail, I meet 65-year-old Shabbir Khan in the village of Chachkapur in Amethi. For generations, his family has voted for the Congress. But even staunch loyalists like Shabbir feel the party is not doing enough. Nothing will change if they don't raise our issues. Rahul Gandhi needs to roar like other politicians. He's a good man, but that's not enough. If he speaks with more conviction, it will be good for him, for the party, and for us. Since India's independence, the Congress party dominated the country's political landscape. From 400 seats in parliament in the 1980s, they were down to 52 in the 2019 elections. To counter the BJP's rising popularity, in July last year, opposition parties joined hands to form a united front. If this alliance wins, our country will win. But in less than a year, there are cracks in the alliance. Key partners have left, joining the BJP, and others are bickering over seats. You're not worried about these differences? I'm not worried. These are differences. We have to recognize they are differences. But a divided house isn't going to be a problem. We are a house divided. We are a house with multiple voices. But multiple voices of dissent as well? No, not necessarily dissent, they're divergent points of view. These differences, though, are casting a doubt in voters. The most raw yet nuanced political conversations in India often happen at these kind of tea stalls. It's the best way to get a pulse of what people are thinking. So what is the situation? Since I became eligible to vote, I have only voted for the Congress. But last time, we voted for the BJP. I asked them, the BJP has one face, Narendra Modi, but the opposition hasn't projected anyone. Do you think they should? Absolutely. That's what we are thinking. There has to be a face that this is our candidate. There is no leader here who can take our problems to Rahul Gandhi. They need to build our roads. Whoever builds this road for us, we will vote for them. There is no bigger issue for us than this. This is interesting because in the middle of all the national issues that are being debated, for the people over here, something as small as building a road to connect this village to the city is as important to them. And just on the basis of that road being built, they'll vote for the party that gives it to them. Young people here are roaming around without jobs and prices are rising. Do you think religious politics will give the BJP political mileage? They are gaining votes only on the basis of religion. If they set religious politics aside, they won't even get a hundred seats in parliament. They should talk about development. They should stop this Hindu-Muslim politics. Carrying on the conversation over tea, I asked them what their message to the Congress party is. Rahul Gandhi should realize he won't get votes just by waving at crowds. He has to find a way to listen to our problems. Just a cross-country roadshow short of elections is not enough. When you are in the opposition, you need to be hungrier, you need to be bolder, you need to be more imaginative, and above all, you've got to work harder. I think if Mr. Modi is looking like a front-runner, I think the full credit for this uh, anomaly has to be given to the Congress party. The opposition says they are up against a lot more. Multiple raids, several arrests, and over 140 opposition MPs suspended in the last session of parliament. All being seen as an act of intimidation. 
Rahul Gandhi's show of strength is an attempt to reclaim a space for the opposition. But can these crowds turn into votes? And can Rahul convert this roadshow into his victory lap? Arunodaya Mukherjee, BBC News, Amiti.